Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Would you please stand for the arrival of our official guests? Group Captain Guy Burton, CSC, representing Air Commodore Scott Winchester, Commander Combat Support Group, Royal Australian Air Force. Mr Ian Walker, MP, Shadow Attorney General and Shadow Minister for Justice, Industrial Relations and Arts, member for Mansfield, representing Mr Lawrence Springborg, MP, Leader of the Opposition, Liberal National Party of Queensland. Colonel Cahill Fagan, DSC, representing Major General Paul McLaughlin, AMCSC, Commander One Division and Deployable Joint Force Headquarters, Australian Army. And Mr Michael Davis, AM, ASM, representing Associate Professor John Harden, AM, Chairman, the Order of Australia Association, Queensland Division. Please join with me in welcoming our official guests. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please stand for the arrival of Queensland's Governor, His Excellency, the Honourable Paul de Jersey AC and Mrs K de Jersey. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Please be seated. Your Excellency, with your permission, I'll begin. His Excellency, the Governor, will present the following honours and awards. Awarded the Star of Courage, the late Pilot Officer James Wallace Hocking, to be received by Mr Alan Hocking. In the early morning of the 28th of July, 1944, Royal Australian Air Force Pilot Officer James Hocking who was then 21 years of age and on attachment with the Royal Air Force, piloted a stricken bomber aircraft away from a village in Cambridgeshire, England. Pilot Officer Hocking was captaining a Stirling bomber aircraft during a night cross-country training flight. As the bomber flew over East Anglia, flames were seen coming out of the inner starboard engine and Pilot Officer Hocking advised his crew that he was going to feather the engine and return to the airbase. The aircraft began to lose power on all engines and Pilot Officer Hocking ordered the crew to stand by and don their parachutes. The aircraft subsequently began to shudder violently so he ordered the crew of six men to abandon the aircraft. The mid-upper gunner went to see if Pilot Officer Hocking was coming and observed that he was halfway out of his seat. Realising that the aircraft was about to crash into the populated township of March, he ordered the gunner to leave the aircraft whilst he struggled with the controls. With the crew safely out, uh, safely out of the aircraft, Pilot Officer Hocking managed to fly the bomber beyond the township before it crashed in a nearby field. Sadly, Pilot Officer Hocking was killed on impact. By his actions, Pilot Officer Hocking displayed conspicuous courage. Awarded the Distinguished Service Cross, 
Air Commodore Stephen Peter Roberton, AM, for distinguished command and leadership from September 2014 to January 2015 in warlike operations as the inaugural commander, Air Task Group 630 on Operation Okra, the Australian Defence Force contribution to combat the Daesh terrorist threat in Iraq and Syria. Appointed a member of the Order of Australia in the General Division, Dr. Michael Anthony Gardner, for significant service to cardiothoracic medicine as a surgeon and a teacher in Australia and overseas, and to professional medical groups, including leadership roles in the Royal Australian College of Surgeons and the Australasian Society of Cardiac and Thoracic Surgeons. Mrs. Paula Jean Penfold for significant service to the community through support for people with muscular dystrophy as a founding member of the Muscular Dystrophy Association of Queensland to child health ethical standards and to medical research as a research assistant and co-author of papers. Ms. Kim Rabina Stewart, for significant service to nursing through a range of voluntary roles as a cl clinical nurse, surgical assistant, head of operating theatres and fundraiser throughout the developing world, particularly in Asia and the Pacific. appointed a member of the Order of Australia in the Military Division, Colonel Ashley Warren Gunder, for exceptional service in command, training and development streams as the Commander Combat Training Centre and Senior Staff Officer, Headquarters 1st Division, during the period 2009 to 2015, resulting in timely and relevant training for defence personnel preparing for combat. Awarded the Conspicuous Service Cross, Lieutenant Colonel Robert Jeffrey Brennan, for outstanding achievement as the Commanding Officer of the 9th Battalion, the Royal Queensland Regiment, and for initiative in development of the 11th 13th Brigade Reinforcing Battle Group and leadership as its inaugural Commanding Officer, resulting in increased Army Reserve contributions. Wing Commander Natasha Ann Pulford for outstanding achievement, consistent professional excellence and dedication to duty as the Joint Program Officer Integrated Logistics Systems Coordinator, Maritime Patrol and Reconnaissance Aircraft Systems Program Office, developed joint United States Navy and Australian logistics support for Australian P-8A capability.
awarded the Public Service Medal, Ms. Helen Louise Gluer, for leadership, determination and integrity in giving outstanding public service in Queensland for more than 30 years, leading reform, contestability and implementation of best practice standards across a range of organisations, most recently as Chief Executive Officer of Queensland Rail. Awarded the Medal of the Order of Australia in the General Division, Mr Maxwell Robert Barton. For service to seniors and to the community through leadership roles in the Association of Independent Retirees and the Probus Association of Queensland and through active membership of Probus, helping forge international fellowship bonds and writing a history of the Association. Professor John Roland Cole for service to the environment through a founding role and leadership in a range of environmental management and protection entities to higher education through contributions to the study of resilient regions and sustainable business and development and to the community. Mr. Stephen Charles Eaton for service to veterans and their families through the Returned and Services League of Australia, particularly on Bribey Island, and through the League's Community Link Remembrance Program, as well as through membership of APEX and the Bribey Island State School PNC. Mr. Alan Daniel Fazeldean for service to early childhood care through long and dedicated membership of a range of early childhood org organisations and to other community organisations including Apex Australia, particularly through writing books and manuals about childcare policy, industrial relations and committee management. Ms. Beryl Joan Holmes for service to women through such organisations as Children by Choice, the Women's Electoral Lobby, the Queensland Council of Civil Liberties and the Commonwealth Women's Information Service Queensland and to the community through contributions to sport, particularly hockey and croquet. Mr. John Richard Luff for service to children through cancer support organisations, specifically by founding the Children's Cancer Institute of Australia in 1976 and as an apexian 
liaising with 800 Apex clubs to raise funds for a research unit of the Prince of Wales Children's Hospital. Mr. Ross Peter Patching for service to the community through social welfare initiatives including the Caboolture Regional Domestic Violence Service, White Ribbon Day and serving as a State Domestic Violence Coordinator and to the sport of pistol shooting as an office bearer, team manager and judge. <coughs> Mrs. Joycelyn Beatrice Reek. For service to aged persons through coordinating Meals on Wheels and serving as the Board of Cabanabar Care and to the Uniting Church in Australia as a lay preacher and by supporting the Church Council, Women's Fellowship and Chaplaincy Committees. Mr. Alan John Sawyer. For service to the Anglican Church of Australia through the Church's Defence Force Board and the Council of the Anglican Diocese of Brisbane, representing the Diocese of the Anglican Synod of Australia and serving as parish councillor for four different parishes. Dr. Keith Ernest Tronk. For service to the legal profession as a barrister and a writer of numerous manuals and guides on the law and to education as a primary and secondary school teacher, senior academic and author of a number of books on education. Awarded the Conspicuous Service Medal, Lieutenant Colonel Andrew Baker. For meritorious devotion to duty as Senior Instructor of the All Call Majors Course and Advanced Operations Course, Officer Training Wing, Land Warfare Centre, leaving a lasting legacy of professionalism through the delivery, conduct, development and continuous improvement of courses. Excellency, some military personnel have protected identities and will be identified by title and initial only. Awarded a commendation for distinguished service, Group Captain R. For dedication, professional excellence and distinguished performance of duties in warlike operations, bringing great credit to himself and the Australian Defence Force during Operation Okra, the Australian Defence Force contribution to combat the Daesh terrorist threat in Iraq and Syria.
address you. That concludes today's awards. Could I invite you to address the recipients and their guests? Mr uh, Ian Walker, representing the opposition leader, our other official guests, and our wonderful recipients and their proud sponsors. Good morning to you all. It's a great pleasure for Kay and me to welcome you to Government House today for this investiture ceremony. These ceremonies, ladies and gentlemen, are among the most significant events which occur in our annual calendar here at Government House. They're important because they give me, as Governor, the great privilege of presenting awards to the wonderful Queenslanders who have made outstanding contributions to their community, to the state and to the nation. They also give me the opportunity to thank and congratulate them, both personally and, and on behalf of their fellow Queenslanders and Australians, some of whom are watching right now because, as you may know, this ceremony is being live streamed. Now, as you've heard, the honours presented today include a star of courage, a rare decoration which has been awarded only 139 times in the 40 years since the Australian Honours System was instituted. It's uh, second only to the Cross of Valour in terms of civilian acknowledgement. It's a very high award, um, approximate, I might say, to the military award of the Victoria Cross. Awarded posthumously, as awards for bravery sadly often are, that star of courage honoured a young bomber pilot who died on a training flight in England as long ago as 71 years ago during World War II. When he diverted his plummeting aircraft away from a nearby village and deliberately crashed it into a field, he gave his life to save others, many others. And I recognise today Councillor Mike Cornwall, who with Mrs Cornwall has travelled from Fenland District Shire in the United Kingdom to be with us, representing the town of March where the plane went down. And also, Mrs Joyce Milligan from the Sunshine Coast, who nominated Pilot Officer Hocking in the process writing, I understand, directly to Her Majesty the Queen. Where are you, Mrs Milligan? We welcome you. I single out this award, ladies and gentlemen, for mention this morning, not only because of the extraordinary courage demonstrated by Pilot Officer Hocking, but because his story exemplifies one of the qualities which we most respect as a nation and that our Australian system was created to honour, and that is the quality of altruism, of putting others before oneself. We see this not only in the courageous actions of men and women who receive decorations for bravery, but also in the commitment of those who have dedicated their lives, their passion, their energy to making a difference in their community, in their workplace, or in their chosen profession or career. The awardees at this ceremony this morning are honoured for a range of outstanding contributions. Service to cardiothoracic medicine, to muscular dystrophy research, and support to nursing in developing countries, to the Queensland Public Service and the Australian Defence Force, service to seniors and the aged, to women and children, to veterans, the environment, the legal profession, sport education, religious institutions and social welfare. What an extraordinary range. The honours presented today are also exceptional in their range, with no fewer than nine of the 55 awards in our system represented. The Star of Courage, three different honours within the Order of Australia, a Public Service Medal, two different Distinguished Service Decorations, and two different Conspicuous Service Awards. When combined with the many different fields of endeavour through which you have contributed as recipients, 
we can see just how much richer Australia is as a nation because of what each of you has done. Today, you have joined a community of honour and your contribution has now been recorded formally as part of our national history, our national fabric. Your service will also become part of your family's proud histories, remembered and respected for generations to come and encouraging others to act as you have done through leadership, a commitment to excellence, determination, perseverance, dedication and care for others. Congratulations to you all. The warmest congratulations from me. Please accept this morning's hospitality as a sign of the broader community's gratitude. And I encourage you to continue to familiarise yourselves with Fernberg's latest edition, Police Recruit Dog Gavel. Thank you all. Thank you, Your Excellency. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please stand for the Vice Regal salute and the Governor's departure. Excellency, could I invite you and Mr Jersey to retire while we organise the recipients for a photo? Thank you. Flight Dharma, would you take our VIPs out, please? If the recipients would like to take their seats, please. Um, everybody else, um, morning tea is served on the lawn behind you, so if you'd like to exit the doors you came through, morning tea is served. Thank you.